In this video we're going to make this wall mount for a HP monitor. These are quite difficult to fix because they don't actually have the visa fixing holes on the back of the monitor. So we've had to adapt the existing monitor stand. Unfortunately I'm on lockdown at the minute so I did have a bit of spare time so I thought I'd make one rather than buying one. So basically we've got the wall plate that will fix onto the wall in the office then got a couple of extension arms and then that part there actually enables you to tilt the monitor from side to side if it's not hanging completely level. There is going to be quite a bit of work involved in doing this but at the moment there's not a lot else can be doing anyway so it doesn't really matter how long it takes. So that is the current stand and underneath there there's actually a plastic tab and if you press that it actually means that you can pull the stand away from the monitor and that is the fixing that we're left with and that does move slightly. So I'm just going to unscrew that and then we're left with that part. You can see that that's got a square in so that will only fit on the monitor that way around because the plastic tab engages with that. So it is designed only to work in that direction and you leave it click on like so. That then holds that in position. But we need to put the square on the other side because we're going to have that that way. So the first job is to cut that square out on the back side of that. Like I say, I am using bits that I've got left over from previous jobs. So I've got a bit of angle iron there. I've got a flat piece of steel there, mild steel. That's about five mil thick. And then I've got two pieces of aluminium box section. Now these are actually left over from a previous video where I made a scissor mechanism for a Halloween prop. And also I've got the M8 shoulder bolts left over from that so I can use those to bolt those two pieces together. The idea is to just use this place, I'm not actually going to cut that down, I'm just going to put four holes in it for fixing holes which I'll countersink and then I'm going to cut this into two small pieces. I'll put one piece at the bottom there and one piece at the top bolt them onto the back piece using some small countersunk bolts and that will be the main part of the bracket. Obviously this part will pivot and then we'll have another piece coming out of there which will also pivot. So that is the basic design of it. The easiest way of doing this will be to cut these two pieces and then weld it but I do realise that a lot of people don't have a welder so I'm going to do it the hard way, I'm going to drill and tap it. I'm going to start off by using a very small drill bit which is about 1.5 to 2 mil. I'm then going to drill a small hole in each corner. So we've now got the four holes in the corner, we're now going to swap to a larger drill bit. So we now just need to file that until it is square. So we've now got the square on the opposite side just like we need it so that will engage that way like it did normally. You can then swap that over and it engages again. We now need to fix that part to a piece of the box section which is quite difficult. There is actually a threaded hole in there so I could drill straight through the top and screw it in that way but I'm not keen on doing that because all the weight is being held just on that bit of threaded aluminium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill straight through there and straight through the box section and I'm going to put a large bolt through there. In fact I'm going to use a piece of 8mm threaded bar because that's all I've got that is long enough. I've marked that ready for drilling. I'm now going to centre punch that and then I'm going to drill that with a 5mm drill bit first and then an 8mm clearance hole.
So I'm now going to mark these up for drilling. That is the first piece that goes like so. So this time we need to get the hole for this one on the top. So I've set the vernier to approximately 12.5 millimeters. And what we can do with that is just score lightly down the center of that. Now when we do these, all the holes need to be in the same position. So this is very easy. So I'll set that to about 24 mil. We then just need to remove any burrs internally and externally. If we put those together they are almost identical so we'll just clamp those up now and then we'll give them a flap with the flap disc to ensure that they are both identical. So that's the back plate, then made those two pieces which will be fixed on there like so and in between there will go that piece of aluminium. So we now need to drill straight through there and it's critical that these two holes both align with each other. So what we can do is we can measure that and mark it out or we can use something like this. I have done a video on this in the past. It's the Marksman paint pen and this is very good if you need to mark through a hole like that. So I'm only doing this as a demonstration. So we can align that on the, that piece. Get it central and where we want it. And then we can simply press through there. So that's where the hole needs to be in that. What we're going to do with those is clamp both of those together. And then we're going to spot straight through both pieces at once. So we're going to make sure that they're aligned perfectly. And I'm just going to use this small clamp. If you don't have a clamp like this, you can of course use a pair of mole grips or vice grips as they're called in some countries. We can then drill straight through that. Before we do that, I'm just going to punch the center of that mark. And we do need to ensure that that is level when we drill through there. I've covered that in engineer's blue so that you can see this. I've actually marked the centre. That is where we will be fixing that part eventually. We're going to be using these screws to fix it to the wall. So I'm going to drill a five millimeter clearance hole. So I'm now going to take this and I'm just going to scribe. I've set the vernier to 15 mil. I'm just going to scribe a line on each end like so and like so and where those lines intersect I will centre punch it and that is where we're going to drill the fixing holes
and you can see the scribe line down the center of there I've also scribed down the center of each one of these pieces of angle iron so I can now put that on there we just need to align the scribe lines and then we're going to clamp that in position and we're going to clamp it so that it's, the clamp's not in the way of where the holes need to be So that is essentially the part that's going to fix to the wall and the first part of the bracket. And I've clamped that on there because we're going to drill straight through where I've centre punched it and we're going to drill straight through with the tapping sized drill. We can then remove these two pieces and we can tap the plate at the back and then we can open up the holes on these two clearance holes. We're going to use this M6 tap, which is M6 by 1, and to get the tapping sized hole, you deduct the pitch from the diameter and that will give you the tapping sized hole. So we need to drill the hole at 5mm. So you can now see that we've got the four holes drilled all the way through there. We can now remove the clamps. If you've never seen these clamps before, they're called Kant. And I'm not actually swearing there, it's K-A-N-T. And these are really useful. They're actually called lever clamps. The holes in the angle will be drilled out to an M6 clearance hole. And the M5 holes that we have in there will be tapped using an M6 tap. Of course the easiest way of fixing these onto there is to weld it on but obviously not everybody has a welder that's why I'm going through the process of drilling and tapping. I'm not just going to file all of the edges. Some of these are very rough because I've not actually done anything with them. So I'm going to give them a file, get them nice and smooth, and then I'm just going to put a chamfer all the way around it. So that is now burr free and it has a nice clean edge all the way around it. Now we're just going to take the rest of the bits and we're just going to clean them up with a file and then put a chamfer on all of the edges. So this is the part that fits onto the actual monitor. So we need to build that up. That will go like that. So I didn't have a bolt long enough for this. So I've made one out of some threaded bar and I've put a nylock on the end of it there. And I've cleaned up that end. But where that part bolts to that part, 
I think that if I tighten it too much it's going to crush this box section so I'm going to cut a piece of wood to fit in there from this block. So that is now very tight. I'm going to press that in using the vise and hopefully it won't split the aluminium. Well, that's definitely not going to come out. I can now drill through there with an 8mm drill bit and there's absolutely no way at all that that is going to get crushed when we tighten up the nut. The basic idea behind this part is to give us something that can level up the monitor. So two springs in the centre there. I'm then going to use those bolts. I'll cut the heads off and I'm going to tap the aluminium but I'm going to put an insert in and I'm going to use those which are called Riv Nuts. These are absolutely superb and they will give us a really strong threaded hole in the aluminium. So the Riv Nut will go in there, that will screw into there, obviously I'll cut the head off that and then we can use that on the top and that will allow us to get some adjustment by adjusting the screw at either side. I'm now just going to colour one of these in so that you can see it. You can of course use engineer's blue if you have it. But if you don't, a permanent marker works just as well. So that is 4 inches in length and I've set the vernier to 2 inches, approximately 50mm. I'm just going to scribe across the centre of there. And then I've set it to about 20 mil, and we're just going to put another scribe line in there. So I've just scribed a line down the center and then two that are 20 millimeters in. So I've now set the vernier to 12.5 mil. I can now scribe where each one of these lines is. And where those lines intersect is where we're going to center punch it for drilling. I've now clamped both pieces together and I've ensured that the clamps won't be hit by the drill bit when that goes through there. So the centre hole is going to be M8, that's going all the way through both pieces. The two outer holes will be M6 and they will stop because they don't need to go all the way through the last piece. So they're just going to go until it gets into that second piece. And then I'm just going to use a countersink to remove any of the burrs. That does quite literally take a second. So that's the top piece. That is pretty much finished. We now need a threaded hole in the aluminium. So to do that we're going to use a riv nut which is like that. These are called rivet nuts or rivet nuts. They may also be known by other trade names etc. So basically what you do with this is you drill a hole large enough for it. So we need to enlarge the two holes at the end there to 9mm. I've actually measured that using the vernier and it is approximately 9mm. 
We then use this tool, we screw that on the end of there. And it's a bit like using a rivet gun. We can then put that in there, that will leave us a steel threaded hole. I don't want to spend too much time explaining how these work, but I have done a separate video on riv nuts and I'll put a link to that in the description. But they are absolutely superb when you need to get a threaded hole in a piece of thin steel or a piece of thin aluminium, etc. So to use the rib nuts, we simply take it, screw it onto the end of there, insert that into the hole as far as it'll go, and then squeeze the handles together. Once you squeeze the handles, you can then let go of them. And then we can unscrew that. And that leaves us with a threaded insert inside of the aluminium. And it is, it is actually quite difficult squeezing those handles together. But as you can see, we've now got the two threaded holes in there. So basically the studs will screw into there and they will be thread locked in. The springs then go on, that piece goes on and on the top there we have the two knobs. One piece is bolted to the bracket, the other to the arm that connects to the monitor. And that then enables you to tighten one side up. And you can see that that is now not even. That will give us the adjustment we need to get the monitor completely level. I have opened the holes up in this piece to 8mm. So we've got plenty of room for the M6 bolt to go through. I'm now going to take some thread locker. And I'm going to thread lock the two studs in there. We now just need to clean all these bits up before we start to paint them. As you can see that started to rust. So we're just going to clean that rust off using a Scotch-Brite pad. Once we've done that, we'll clean everything up using methylated spirits, including the aluminium. And we'll clean that up as well. That'll bring the engineer's blue off. And once we clean everything with mess, we can then start to paint it. I'm not sure what paint I'm going to be using yet, because I'm not sure what I've got. So we'll just have to see. This will remove any oily residues that will prevent the paint from adhering properly. I am actually struggling for paint, but I have actually got this tin of black primer. So we're just going to give it a spray with that. Like I say, at the moment we are in lockdown, so we are limited to what we can buy. And I'm just trying to make this using the materials that I've got available. Obviously, we need to give this a really good shake and we're going to spray this outside.
We can now start to assemble this. Before we do, we're going to push these caps into the ends and that will blank off all of the ends. This will make it look a lot neater. So they will simply push in like so. I actually bought these for another project but I never got around to using them and they have come in very handy for this project. So that is one of the finished arms. So we can now start to assemble this and we're going to start off on the actual wall plate. So I can just fix that down. I'm not going to tighten that up fully yet. I'm then going to take an M8 shoulder bolt, push that through there. And then I'm going to put a nylon washer on there. And then the first part of the bracket. Then another nylon washer. And we actually need a thin metal washer on there as well. And then we can put the other piece of angle on there. And then we can screw in the bottom two bolts. And then we can tighten those up fully. Originally I put a spring on there, but that doesn't enable me to actually tighten it, so I'm just using that which I've found, which is a, a sheer nut. And that will fit on there and take up the excess space, because what I don't want to do is use up all of my M8 washers. So I'm simply going to use that. I've got a few washers on that side. An M8 washer there, then an M6 washer. And then we can tighten that up. So we can now take another washer. Push that through there. We then need a nylon washer, a metal washer, and a nylon washer. And then the next piece. We then need a nylon washer, a metal M8 washer, and an M6 washer. And then the nylon nut again. And by adjusting that nut, you can actually get that as tight or as loose as you want it. So we're now going to repeat that with the next one. Pretty simple now, it's just a case of assembling it like so. So we've now got three of those bolted together, we now just need the final one. Before we bolt this on, we're going to bolt it to that part which fits onto the monitor. And of course we need that bit with the block of wood in the end. So we start off with a nylock, a washer and then a star washer. Push that through there. Then use another star washer. Then that part. Another star washer. 
a flat washer and then the nylock nut. So I've just nipped that up loosely for now and we'll lock that in the final position after. I'm not going to bolt all this together so I'm going to use a M6 roofing bolt. I'm going to pop the two springs on there and then we just need to bolt that onto there and put that on there, put a washer on and then the M6 knobs So we can now put the monitor on there and we can adjust the tilt of it just by tightening up these knobs. So that will ensure that the monitor is always square.